Hi, and welcome back to Dusting History. Today, we've got an image of the very first Australian aviator in his biplane. William Ewart Hart, I guess. <laughs> this image is courtesy of the State Library of New South Wales. It's very low res and very dirty. You can see here, if I just zoom in on the text, you don't have to go in far before you've just got a face full of pixels. So the first thing I want to do is remove the text from this image. And as you can see, these little areas there and those areas there look like the undercarriage of the train and the text is across some of that. So I want to be careful just to remove the text and not anything that helps describe the shape of that train. And as you can see, removing um, text can be a bit problematic because the remove tool tries to add the letters beside the letters into the clear space. Um, so what I ended up doing was actually removing larger areas. There's very low detail. In fact, there's no detail there on the train. It's pitch black. So I felt pretty confident doing that. Next, before I do any other treatments to the image, I'm going to remove the dust. Sometimes I'll color correct the image or I'll uh, up res the image or do a whole bunch of stuff first, but this image is so dusty so dirty that I just figured I would remove all the dirt before I uh, cleaned off the JPEG compression artifacts or rescaled it or sharpened it because that would just sharpen all the dirt up with it. Now there's a lot of questions you have to ask yourself about what is a piece of cloud? What is a piece of dust? What is a scratch? And generally speaking, I think I've done an okay job here. I actually hit the dirt a couple of times in different passes, you'll see. So once I'm happy with that, I'll desaturate the image. Then I'll add an adjustment layer, uh, adjusting the curves. And you can see here, there's a bit of gray in the image. I do like to gamma up like this, just to check that I haven't missed any big pieces of dust before I do anything. And I'm going to pull the black point to just that side of the histogram and the white point to that side, just to put a bit of contrast back in the image. And I'm really interested to see how black the train should be. I kind of figure there shouldn't be any kind of levels of grey there. I do end up with a little bit, uh, just to be on the safe side, but you can see with a bit of contrast, the image is uh, a lot stronger. I do try for a bit of a brightness contrast adjustment here, but I start to worry that I'm clipping some of the whites or the blacks, so I end up uh, getting rid of that. And I'll just pull the black point up a little bit. All right. Bit of a change so far. So now I've duplicated my work and saved it as a new layer up the top. And you can see how low res this actual image actually is. And there's a lot of JP compression everywhere. So using the neural filters, I'm going to go down to uh, photo restoration. And you can see just by default, it cleans things up fairly nicely. Now, if I open up the adjustments tab, I can adjust the JP artifact reduction slider. And what it does is takes a lot of those blocky square JP artifacts and um, sort of dithers them gives you a much smoother resulting image, but probably too smooth in some areas. So I'll tend to back that off a little bit. Now also you can see down the bottom, I've got new layer selected so that any adjustments I do go onto a new layer in the um, layers tab. That way, if I want to make a mask and selectively paint some areas back through, I can. 
and you can see here I'll make a mask, select a black brush. I kind of feel like that adjustment has made too much of a mashup of the fine wires on the on the plane, even though it's a very low res image. Um, I'm preferring to uh, keep some of the detail of the original before I did the JPEG um, artifact adjustment. Now moving over into Topaz, I'm going to do a, a sharpen or an upscale. So this is going to take what's essentially a 1K image and make it like a 4K image. And I don't always like its first guess. Like you can see here, I'm going to open up the adjustments layer and look at the different algorithms that it's used to create that. Currently it's on high fidelity too. And I think that's done a pretty good job of keeping the detail. I do go through some of the other ones just to check, but uh, I think high fidelity too has done a done an all right job and, and the biplane is the most important part of the image. It does bring a little crispness. It also does highlight uh, some of the remaining dots and damage to the picture. Now there you can see, <laughs> as long as I don't paint on it, that's the size of the original image against the size of the upscaled image, just so you could uh, see the relative scales that the um, upscaling's done back in Photoshop. Now with a new layer selected, I'm going to get the heel tool and address some of these problems that came up now that we've upscaled and, and sharpened a little, particularly back where I painted back to the original around the biplane, a lot more of the um, grain, that really aggressive low res grain has come through. So I'm just going to paint some of that away as well. Really, I'm just looking to even out the sky. Now I know this is not possibly archival, right? <laughs> I know this is not, I'm making some choices here which people might balk at, but this was a very, very low res image and it was the only one I could find. I think if I was doing this uh, professionally, I'd be looking to get a much higher scan to start with. I would prefer to have the original and scan a high definition or a high color depth TIFF rather than work from a, a JPEG that I got off uh, Flickr from the um, New South Wales library. So realistically here, all I'm trying to do is make a pleasing image and try to also give everybody else the opportunity, opportunity to see this picture without uh, all that mess on top of it. Now here I'm making a blurry version of the image and masking that away and now just painting the blur back here and there where I think the grain on the clouds is just detracting a bit too much. You can kind of see there. It doesn't hurt because this is such a low detail part of the image and it's got some real patches of, of aggressive grain. So I'm just going to go through here and just paint away some of that sort of visual noise. Trying to be careful to protect the areas of detail of the image and only really hit the areas that are, are kind of flat. One of the last things I'm going to do, because this image has been fairly painted over now, is create an ex a flat grey. This is a, a midpoint grey, 50%. And if I set it to overlay, it doesn't do anything to the image because an overlay um, multiplies blacks and screens whites. So putting that on an overlay and then setting an overlay mode and then adding some grain to that allows me just to dial up a small amount of kind of film grain just to even out the image put a very smooth grain over it, it kind of gives the image a nice unified look. So here's the change from original to restored or retouched at least. I hope you liked that, I hope you enjoyed that um, little exercise. Not all of it was, you know, successful, but I enjoyed myself anyway. Thanks for joining me.